And Lord, we pray that you will hallow this place with your presence. For Lord, truly in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And we depend and rely upon the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Have your way in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're supposed to look more rested because we had an extra hour. 
All I did was do more things around. And, um, you know, I have a couple of things. I have some general announcements, then some other things. But if you look on the back of the, of the bull, your bulletin, the flowers don't, don't, donated by Walter have the sec. Was I even close? Thank you, Walter. Oh, there you are. And oh, in honor of his loving wife, Paulette. Oh, I just love that. Many of our many years together are ever present, aren't they ever? Yes, they are. And when I read that, that reminded me, you know, the joy of being on that prayer chain we have with the chapel. You get these things and you pray, and then you come to church and you see people that you've prayed for. You know, the issues of loss and, and uh, sickness and just the issues of life. And it, it brings us closer. And so, you know, talk to Anna Hewitt if, or talk to good old Bill over there if you want to know how to get on it, okay? But it's wonderful. And then I look at all these volunteers and I think, if you've ever wanted to see your name in print, just sign up and do something. And there it is, Biggest Life. I, I love that too. Bill wanted me to be sure and remind you that the boxes for Operation Christmas Child are due next week. And that's because we have to take them to another place. They have to get shipped. It's a big process. Please remember to put a $10 check in there to cover. It really does make a huge difference in what they can do if the shipping is paid for. And because I raised three sons... I just love doing it for some little girl somewhere. I get all girly, and it's really fun. Um, I also, I'm chattering on a little bit. Good luck, Bill, with your sermon today. But, um, <laughs> you know, before service, I also, in coming here, we women are so funny. We see each other. Maybe we haven't seen each other all week. First thing we have to do is admire one another. Oh, I do enjoy that. Oh, your hair looks so nice. What did you do? Oh, that beautiful color. I enjoy all that very, very much. Always have. But um, another reason we come is we talk about the week. And <laughs> so this brought me to what I'm talking about today. You know our new best friends are doctors, aren't they? In my whole life of being when I was young, I never thought I would go and, and my week would be taken up with doctors. I just don't like it, but I need them for various things. And the doctors are very consistent in what they say. They pretty much say, move. Move it or lose it. Don't they say that? All the time, whether it's swimming, pickleball, tennis, golf, walking, do it every day, and your body will thank you. And that's a physical discipline that I hope we bring into our lives. I'm getting better. I've discovered it's gorgeous outside in the morning. I, I didn't know that, but it is, and I'm very happy to be walking. But that is not the only discipline that we need to pay attention to in our life. It's important, but there's a discipline of the spirit that enriches our lives and makes it possible for us to enrich other people. And I thought I'd share a little bit. I had a discipline that I started years ago. I began to read the Bible all the way through in a year. Now you might go, oh, but you know what happens is your brain through the Holy Spirit starts making these marvelous connections. And all of a sudden something in the Old Testament lights up the new and back and forth it goes, and I can promise you, things change as you do that. Um, I always enjoy, every year I pray, start praying in November about what translation I'm going to do for the following year. And I already know that the Lord wants me to do my mother's Bible. It's an application Bible. And I start looking forward to it. Oh, goody, I get to do this. But am what amazes me is that every translation brings something new, even though I've read the words over and over and over. So this last year, I've been reading a modern translation, The Message. And I must say that its words are not anywhere as beautiful as the regular translate. They're just not. Modern language just can't hold a candle to other Bibles. But when I got to Psalm 100, which is so fitting in the month we're in, you know, remember it says in there, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I know that one. But in the message, part of it says, enter 
with the password thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise. The password thank you. And I stopped, I thought about that the longest time, and I realized he's not talking about, you can say thank you for answered prayer, I do, and you can say thank you in particular things that God does for it. But really, what we really need to do is thank God not for what he does, but who he is. Because if we can't say a lot of things about who God is, then we don't know him very well. And we should get to know him better. Now, in a group I belonged to years ago, when we gathered as a group, sometimes we would do a praise of who God is using the alphabet. And we had the best time. Oh, we came up with great words. But we would start often with uh, that God is absolute. And then sometimes we never get any further because they use that as a launching place to talk about how wonderful it is that God never changes. And you can count on him. But you could go be as beautiful, look outside, creative, delightful. When we get to the F, I think God is funny. And the reason I think that is because I look at the animals, and I just think they're hilarious. Don't you love to go to the zoo? I do. I also think some of the people are really funny, too. And we go on, but when you get to why, it can be tricky. And I always use, thank you, God, that you are a God of yes, that you say yes to us, yes to the people you've made, and yes to creation. Then I get to X. And I am thankful for God's x-ray vision. I can't, I could trick you on something, but I can't trick him. I can't. He knows the thoughts and intentions of my heart. And then Z, he is so zealous for us, isn't he? He wants our transformation more than we ever wanted. You know, we're no, no we're supposed to grow in and become like Jesus. But, you know, some days, uh, not so much. God is zealous. And he will work in those areas to change us. So I hope this is an encouragement to you to use the password thank you when you're talking God. But thank you, yes, for what he's done. But also thank him for who he is. Will you do that? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for our time together so that we can come be in your presence, Lord, your presence. We can praise you and love you and honor you with music and with words and with our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So let's stand up <laughs> and sing, bless the Lord. Stand up and bless the Lord. while you're standing there, bow your heads and pray. Don't just wait for the next thing. And oh Lord, giver of life, we just thank you for our time together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Bill. Glad to be here. <laughs> We're at a place in life and history that we've never been before. This is a day that we have never ever seen nor experienced. But we count on the faithfulness of God to see us day by day. And to be the kind of God that goes before us. And we want you to know that when we gather in his name, he is present. So whatever the need is that you have that's unspoken, for we all have needs. Some we share with others. Some we choose not to share. But we are a needy people in need of God's divine intervention in our lives. And we gather with that focus today that God will meet us at the point of our need. And he has promised that all of our needs would be supplied according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that as you leave this place, this morning, whatever the need is that you've expressed to him, we want you to be confident that he heard you, that he's concerned about you, and that he's going to fulfill that need in his time. We welcome our guests and friends. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, our Father, we are so very grateful that you put us in family. Not just the biological family, but a family that you have called as your children of God. And Lord, we're here not because of our own effort, but we're here because of your mercy that endures forever. Father, we open our hearts, we open our mind, and Father, we pray that you will speak to us as no one else can. For you know us, you created us, and you are the God that goes before us, protecting us from danger seen and unseen. You are faithful and true. And Father, as you have taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Father, we pray your blessing on Beverly Johnson. We pray your blessings on Dorothy Jones and Willie May. And Father and Larry, Frediani, and Lord, all of those who are afflicted and sick. Pray your blessings on Marilyn. Thank you that you're the God that heals us. In Jesus' name we pray these blessings. Amen. Amen. Keep tuned in and worship God in song and in spirit. And you will be changed when you leave here. I think you all know we're going to sing a song now, okay? <laughs> be strong in the Lord.
Can we stand for the doxology, please? God, we take nothing for granted. It's because of you that we are blessed to give. And Father, we pray that you will use these gifts and offerings for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, bless those who give out of their abundance and those who give out of their need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is an interesting song for me to sing today to learn. It was requested by Bonnie Bartell. She's not able to be with the choir with some health issues. But she wanted this song because of the, uh, the election that's coming up. And I don't normally sing songs like that, but uh, the more I looked at the words, one particular thing stood out to me. And it's the chorus I want to just uh, repeat the, uh, just speak the chorus just so when we get there you'll know what the song is about oh god of sweet liberty help us and heal us again if we fall on our knees will you still hear our pleas take us back to where we were then and that's back to god go the land of the brave and the free can one generation retrace a great nation cause we can't find the way to agree cause we can't find the way to agree where has America gone where are Abraham, Martin, and John? We drowned out the voices and gave up our choices. Do we have the strength to move on? Do we have the strength to move on? Oh, God of sweet liberty, Help us and heal us again. If we fall on our knees, will you still hear our pleas? Take us back to where we were then. Take us back to where we were then. How could America fail? We gave up our own holy grail. That old constitution still holds the solution, but we gave up our freedoms for sale. But we gave up our freedoms for sale. Can America still rise again? Find our way back to where we were then. That old family Bible still holds our survival. It spells out the way we can win. Yes, it spells out the way we can win. Oh, God of sweet liberty, 
Please help us and heal us again. If we fall on our knees, will you still hear our pleas? Take us back to where we were then. Take us back to where we were then. Oh, God of sweet liberty, please help us and heal us again. If we fall on our knees, will you still hear our pleas? Take us back to where we were then. Take us back to where we were then. America, where did you go? Praise the Lord. You know, it's good to hear an echo every now and then. Praise the Lord. I love an echo. It is wonderful to be present. Everybody does not have the privilege of being present. Their bodies may be there, but they're not present. They're not clearly thinking. I am so glad that we have gathered this morning present. Present to receive the engrafted word of God with gladness. Present to enjoy the fellowship of one another. Present to encourage and lift each other's up in their travels. It is a journey that we're on. It's a walk of faith. We have a final destination. Whenever you see me bring my laptop, you know something went awry at home. <laughs> and so I think that uh, you can bear with me because we know that the Lord is always sovereign and he's in charge. And we're going to be blessed by some young people uh, today. Amen. Yeah. Would you like to introduce your young people at this time? Okay, you will be blessed and encouraged and uplifted, and uh, I'm going to hurry up and try and get out of your way. Am I stalling for time? Not really. Okay. <laughs> We've chosen this month, this entire month, as our theme... Thanks for giving us. Thanks for giving us. Our theme is in recognition of what God has given us. And the first thing that he has given us is life. We wouldn't be here if we were dead. Hello. And uh, I've done a lot of dead services, but this is not one of them. You are very much alive because of God giving to you the breath of life. And we are a reflection of God. Now, I've chosen the scripture text, and you have a copy of the scripture text. And we're going to go right down this passages of scriptures, and you're going to be following with me. And um, we're going to uh, do this together as a team. Any 49er fans in here? Okay. When you are privileged to go to the game, you don't just sit there and not get involved. But you get involved because that's your team. That is your team. You want to see your team succeed. <laughs> She's got, she's got the spirit. <laughs> They're not playing this week, I don't think. But you want to encourage one another because we are a team. We are a family. We are a team that represents 
God because he created us in his image and in his likeness. And our first scripture is found in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26. It says, then God said, let us make man, mankind, in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the birds of of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God has given us responsibility. What does it mean to be created in God's image? Being made in his image means God formed us distinctly to present us to him out of all the creatures that God created us that God created, we are the only ones that were created in his image. And he has given us responsibility to manage what he has given us domain over. Hello, somebody. We're supposed to manage the creation that God has given us. And he has given us that charge. David looked at the vastness of God's creation and said in Psalms 8, Verses 1 through 6, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which have been set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of him, human beings, that you care for them? God cares about every single individual who bears his image and his likeness. Now, we may not care about everybody. God cares about every person who is born into this world, bearing his image. Verse 5 says, You have made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. You have a responsibility. God made you, created you, to be responsible people. Hello. We're living in a late age where people don't want to be responsible. They don't want to be accountable. But we know that we are held accountable to our actions and to the things that we do. God the Father has an incredible love for you. Just as you have an incredible love for your children and your offsprings, you want the very best for them. They are free will. They have choices. They choose based upon what they desire. Not many times what the parents desire. God desires for us to have a life. An everlasting life. He created us with eternity in view. Our likeness with God is not physical, physical, but denotes our capacity to rule over creation in being in relationship with him. Now, some people get all bent out of shape because of religion. God has never demanded us to be religious. He created us for relationship. Let's not get it twisted. God created us for relationship. And that's what you desire in your heart because you also have a heart that God created. You want relationship. In mankind, there is a desire for relationship. God wants a relationship. You have the choice whether or not you want a relationship with God or not. You have that choice. That choice is not removed from you. God wants a relationship with every human being, and we are created in his image with the ability to Exercise, reason, intelligence, speech, moral, consciousness, creativity, rationality, and making correct choices. Hello. God wants us to make 
correct choices. That's why the Word of God says, Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all of your ways, and He's going to direct your path. Because sometimes we don't understand some things. Our relationship with God and our choices will always align in His perfect will. Did you hear that? Our choices will always align with His perfect will as we are following Him. As we maintain a relationship with Him, our very existence is for God to bless us and enjoy fellowship with us for this reason. He made us like himself to live eternity with him. You were created for eternity. Death did not stop your destination for eternity. Every person will live forever. Hello. Your spirit, your soul will live forever. So I want to make sure that my next life is going to be somewhere where I choose. Not somewhere where I end up or land up. I want to make a choice of where I want to spend the rest of my eternal existence. And God gives us that choice the very moment that Lucifer laid eyes on us when God created Adam and Eve. When Lucifer laid his eyes upon them, he was angry. He was jealous because he was filled with pride when he was in heaven as an archangel. He said to himself, I want to be God. I want to take the place of God. I want to sit where God sits. And he was cast down because of his pride. And he is still interfering with God's children. He is interfering with God's children. His desire is to steal, kill, and destroy what God has created for his joy, for his pleasure. He wants to take life. He doesn't want to give life. Understand, we have one single enemy. And the enemy is not a person in the flesh and blood. The enemy is the rule of the air, the prince of the air. The enemy is Lucifer, the devil, Satan. He is the one who messes in our affairs. Come on, somebody. So we, first of all, Thank God for life, number one. Lord, we thank you for life. I didn't have to be here, but Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my choice. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for keeping me. Scripture text number two, Galatians 5, 13, 14, and this is the Amplified Revision, for you, my brothers, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for sinful nature, for your sinful nature, worldliness, selfishness. But through love, serve and seek the best for one another. Every father and mother in here, grandmother, great-grandmother, whatever your station is in life at this time, you want the very best for your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. You pray for the best for them. You do not want them to be held captive to anything or anyone or anybody. You want them to experience the fullness of life. And you want them to be joyful concerning their lives and what they're able to accomplish. Verse 14, for the whole law concerning our human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, you shall 
have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. You know, neighbor, neighboring is, can be a verb. I neighbored you. I care for you. I come to your aid. It's not, well, I have a bunch of neighbors on my street, but I don't know any of them. So how do you love your neighbor when you have not established a relationship with them? You don't know what they need. You don't know what is important in their lives. So we are to love our neighbor and love them for their benefit, not for our benefit. Our scripture text, James 125 says, But he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides in it, not having become careless. A careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. You know, we have, we have uh, laws in this community here. Did you know that? We have laws in this community. And one of them is speed limit is 25. Is that a law? Yeah. How many times have you seen people come up to the stop and just keep going? And some people just, just ride on through as if there was no stop sign, that there was no speed limit. We have a law. The law that this scripture is talking about, the perfect law, is Jesus Christ. The perfect law is Jesus Christ. Having a relationship with him in order that we might be blessed and favored by God in what he does and in what we do. I live for the favor of God. How many of you live for the favor of God? You want God to go before you. When you get sick, you want to know that God is going before you. When you get down, you want to know that God is with you. And when you go and apply for a job, talking to young people now, praise God. You want the favor of God to open a door for you so that you can get employed and have a life. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you would ask, imagine, think about, desire. I want to be in a relationship with that kind of person. Praise God. God wants a relationship with you. Number two, thanks for giving us liberty. And liberty represents freedom. God has given us liberty. Our enemy wants to enslave us. The devil wants to enslave us so that we feel like there is no way out. And a lot of people are dropping out of society because they feel, they feel, they feel that there is no out. We don't operate by our feelings, because our feelings are deceiving. And that's how the enemy works. He works in our feelings. And we must operate in our faith and our reliance upon the truth of God's word. God cannot lie. He cannot deceive us. He will always give us the truth. So we are grateful and we're thanking God for the liberty that he has given us. You shall know the truth. Jesus says you shall know the truth and the truth shall 
I thought it bound you. Truth doesn't bind you up. You're all for silent. Does truth bind you up? Absolutely not. Truth frees you. And when you speak truth, when you live in truth, you cannot be deceived. Because truth is always about liberating you, lifting your burdens, lifting your concerns, giving you clarity, giving you confidence. So thanks God for giving us liberty. Scripture takes number three or four. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, the Amplified Version. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Delight in your faith. Delight in your faith. Delight in your faith. Regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of what's going on around you, delight in your faith. Who is your faith in? Come on. For those of you that your faith is in Christ, then my faith is in Christ. For those of you that my faith is in the Word of God, my faith is in the Word of God. You cannot depend on human flesh. Have no confidence in man because man is vulnerable. Have no confidence in the way of man because he shifts as the wind blows. Whatever is popular over here, he's going to go that way. Whatever is popular over here, he's going to go that way. But God is sovereign. He is going to be consistent regardless of what's going on out here and around us. The truth is the truth, and we must stand on the truth and declare it. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. If there is ever a time that we should not be asleep. Did you get sleep last night? Some of you look like you need a little more, praise God. <laughs> I can't tell you how the burden of prayer is on our hearts. There's always something going on in life that brings us to prayer. Situations that are happening brings us to prayer. Because if we do not maintain a spirit and a heart of prayer, guess what is going to happen? We're going to be complaining and we're going to be murmuring. We're going to be upset. We're going to be just a bundle of nerves. But when we are praying and persistent in prayer, always prayerful, we're walking in the Spirit. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances are, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. I love to be in the midst of thankful people. Hallelujah, somebody. Have you ever been in a crowd of complaining people? Doesn't that just zap your strength and wear you out? We have so much to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. And so we just want to always have an attitude and a heart full of thanksgiving. Scripture text, John 15, 10. This is the New Living Bible. When you obey me, Christ is saying, you are living in my love. Just as I obey my Father and live in his love, I have told you this so that you will be filled with sadness, with depression, with complaints, 
that you would be filled with joy. Because that's where our strength is. Our strength comes from the confidence of knowing that God is with us, that God is for us, and that we can be joyful because we know that he's going to take care of everything concerning our lives. I have told you this. Yes, your cup will be full of joy, will overflow. When was the last time that your cup overflowed with joy? Wow. <laughs> we give thanks to God for joy. It is truly a joy that we have this time together this morning. Your application, keeping aligned with God's will makes our witness effective in reaching others for Christ. We're here as children of God. We're here to represent the light of his glory. We're here to bring hope to other people who have chosen not to have a relationship with a God that loves them so much that he was willing to sacrifice his only begotten son that we would have the gift of eternal life that we could not merit, that we could not work for, that we could not earn because he loved us so, that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should make a decision to come in relationship to him. And I close my laptop. Thank you, brother. <laughs> He's tracking with me. Let us pray. I'm going to give you a final benediction, and we're going to turn it over to Mark, and uh, he will introduce our wonderful young people, young guests. I am so grateful that you are here, and I pray that God's favor will go with you and that he'll open up doors for you to prosper and that you will be successful in everything that you endeavor to do to bring him honor and to bring him glory and to be a blessing to your parents and all of those whose lives you intersect. Father God, we thank you for the move of your spirit. And Lord, we pray that you will bless us as those who have been created in your image and in your likeness to be a hope for others. In Jesus' name, we pray for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mark. Uh, we have three wonderful uh, musicians who are going to come and play. <laughs> and um, it's listed as the post booth, but when we get special guests, we don't like them. That is the very last thing. So um, they're going to be, I know them because uh, I work with a uh, Another place as well called the Polo Office School of Table Music. Mm -hmm. um, Merit is our pianist, mm -hmm. Kai is our cellist, and Marissa, who will emerge shortly, oh. is our violinist. <laughs> and they've come from Polo Office for Dunes. They're all high school freshmen, oh. and I'm just really thrilled to come to Dunes today. And I just wanted to have to say, I've been working for this school for a couple yeah. years now, and I've been wanting to bring a group here to play something. And this is the first group I felt really ready to do this with. And when, it's not just how well they play or whatever, it's also their attitude and how they carry themselves in rehearsal. It's been a real joy to work with this group. So please welcome this wonderful group. Yeah.
response to say, saying, if you know it really well, you might look at the words and go, hey, that's not the second verse that I remember. But it works out. It's just fine. Uh, here we are. Please take a look at your bulletin if you think, oh, I know all the words. This is the second verse. It might be a little bit different. Should we stand? Please stand as you're <laughs> I guess it used to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.